For benzene nomenclature, you're going to be expected to memorize the most common base names for the monosubstituted benzene derivatives. So that would be the set that I just highlighted right there. Now as far as naming them, we're going to go through and we'll monosubstitute it first, and then we'll get into dye and then multi-substituted and see how to deal with that. If it's monosubstituted, it's really pretty straightforward. You just take the substituent name, tack the word benzene onto the end of it. It's all one word. So, for example, if you see a nitro group, it becomes nitrobenzene, all one word. Bromine, bromobenzene. This right here is a common name secbutyl, so you could say a secbutyl benzene, or if you wanted to, since the point of attachment is right there, three carbon chain off of it, you could say one methyl propyl benzene as well. If the monosubstituted derivative comes off of the list that I'm having you memorize, then just use its name. So for example, a methyl group on benzene wouldn't be called methyl benzene. You would want to call it toluene. Likewise, if there's an OH on there, it's not hydroxybenzene, but phenol, since those are very accepted common names. If it's a di-substituted benzene, what you first want to do is attempt to find a parent name from that list. Then you're going to have to indicate relative positions of the two groups. If they're side by side, like in this first example, that's called ortho. Or we can use numbers, that's perfectly acceptable, be one, two. If they are spaced, separated by one carbon, that's meta. Or we could use numbers and say one, three. And then we would say para if they're opposite, or alternately, we could do 1, 4. So, looking at our first example, which is the one with the NH2, if you look at that list, this particular group on the benzene has a common name. It's called aniline. A-N-I-L-I-N-E. There's a propyl group off the aniline. It's in the ortho position. So we would call this ortho propyl aniline. You could also just as well have gone to dash and then propyl aniline. That would be okay. Sometimes you will see just O in a dash, propyl aniline. O is short for ortho. Let's go now to the second one coming across with the chloro and the bromo. Neither one of those is found on our list of common names, and so we're going to have to name it as a true disubstituted benzene. One of them will be at number one, one of them will be at number three. The numbering is going to be one and three regardless of which way I go. So I'm going to start at the bromine because it comes first alphabetically. So we'll go one, two, three, and it will be one bromo, three chloro, benzene. Okay. Now, going to the third one. I have a ketone and an alcohol. Now, I can look at this as a phenol substituted with a ketone, or I can look at it as an acetophenone substituted with an OH. Which one I choose really depends on which one has higher priority. If you look at your prioritization of functional groups, you can see ketones are higher up than OHs. So this is actually going to be an acetophenone with a hydroxy substituent. The arrangement of the two is para, so I'm going to say para hydroxy acetophenone. Or I could also have done P, of course. I could also have done 4 hydroxy acetophenone. All right, going now to our last one. The parent would be this right there. And if you look on your list, that is anisol. Now stay on the, the list that has the common names, and you will see 
a benzene ring, and it, as a substituent, is called phenyl, P-H-E-N-Y-L. It's not phenol, that's with an O-H. This is phenyl. So the phenyl group is ortho to the parent group. So I'm going to say ortho phenyl anisol. Or I could have likewise done 2 phenyl anisol. Going on to trisubstituted derivatives. You can't use ortho, meta, and para now because you have two different groups on there and it would be difficult to say what's ortho to what or what's para to what. One might be para to something but meta to something else. It gets very confusing. So what you're going to do first is find your parent base name and then you're going to number around the ring so that the substituents get the lowest possible numbers, taking the position of the parent substituent to be number one. You're going to list the substituents alphabetically before the base name. So, in our first example, the parent is benzaldehyde. And if I go around the ring counterclockwise, benzaldehyde is number one, then two, the nitrose three, four, five, six. The nitrose three, the bromine's five. If I end up going the other direction, and let's switch ink colors for that, the aldehyde is still number one, the going clockwise, the bromine gets number two, oh whoops, sorry, that's number two, the bromine gets number three, then four, nitro's five, and that other position is six. Then I still have a three five. I had a three five going one way, a three five going the other way. So in terms of the numbering, it doesn't matter. Then we drop down to alphabetical. Bromine comes before nitro, bromine gets the smaller number. So this becomes 3-bromo, 5-nitro, benzaldehyde. All right, going to our next example, finding the parent. The parent is aniline. It gets number 1. And then on this one, we're pretty clearly going to be going around counterclockwise from the NH2. Chlorine comes before ethyl, so this is 2-chloro, 3-ethyl, aniline. 